Akashvani presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Sunil Verma. The headlines. Shanghai Cooperation Organization reaffirms its commitment to fight terrorism, separatism and extremism. President Draupadi Murmu to address convocation of Gondwana University in Garchiroli, Maharashtra today. IMD issues red alert for three districts of coastal Karnataka predicting extremely heavy rainfall today. Orange alert issued for 12 districts of Kerala. July the 3rd was the world's hottest day ever due to climate change and emerging El Nino pattern. And in football, India beat Kuwait 5-4 in penalty shootout to lift SAS championship trophy for ninth time. Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO, has reaffirmed its commitment to fight terrorism, separatism and extremism. The SCO emphasized on taking measures to disrupt the terror financing channels, stop the radicalization of youth and eliminate sleeper cells and places used as terrorist safe havens and cross-border movement of terrorists. Leaders of the SEO adopted New Delhi Declaration after a virtual meeting of the Council of Heads of State of SEO yesterday. According to the New Delhi Declaration, the member states will seek to develop common principles and approaches to form a unified list of terrorist, separatist and extremist organizations whose activities are prohibited on the territories of the SEO member states. They oppose the militarization of information and communication technologies. The member states have expressed their concern about the growing threats posed by increased production, trafficking and abuse of narcotic drugs and using the proceeds of illicit drug trafficking as a source of funding for terrorism. They stress the need for a joint and balanced approach to countering the trafficking of illicit drugs. The member states appreciate the outcomes of India's presidency of the SEO in 2022-2023, which has contributed to the further development of multifaceted and mutually beneficial cooperation. Briefing the media in New Delhi, Foreign Secretary Vinay Mohan Quatra said, all the leaders welcomed the completion of the procedure for Iran to join as the organization's full member state. All the leaders welcomed the completion of procedure for Iran to join as the organization's full member state. Prime Minister also congratulated President Raisi on this occasion. The leaders also welcomed the decision on signing the Memorandum of Obligation of Belarus to join the organization as a member state. The process of Belarus membership will be completed by 2024 SEO Summit next year. In his address to the summit, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that some countries use cross-border terrorism as an instrument of their policies and provide shelter to terrorists. He stressed that SEO should not hesitate to criticize such nations. Atangwaad, chahe kasi bhi rup mein ho, kisi bhi abhivyakti mein ho, hume iski virut milkar ladai karni hogi. Kuch desh cross-border terrorism ko अपनी नीतियों के इंस्ट्रूमेंट के रूप में इस्तेमाल करते हैं आतंकवादियों को पनाह देते हैं एससीओ को ऐसे देशों की आलोचना में कोई संकोच नहीं करना चाहिए ऐसे गंभीर विषय पर दोहरे मापदंड के लिए कोई स्थान नहीं होना चाहिए टेरर फाइनेंसिंग से निपटने के लिए हमें भी आपसी सहयोग बढ़ाना चाहिए मिस्टर मोदी सेड the SEO has emerged as a significant platform for peace, prosperity and development in the entire Asian region in the past two decades. He also said, India has made continuous efforts to take SEO's multidimensional cooperation to new heights as its chairperson. Mr. Modi said, India has established five new pillars of cooperation within the SEO. The next meeting of the SEO Council of Heads of State will be held in 2024 in Kazakhstan. President Draupadi Murmu will address convocation of Gondwana University in Garchiroli, Maharashtra today. Six students who have won gold medals in the various academic branches will be honoured at the hands of the President during this convocation ceremony. 
In the afternoon, the President will inaugurate the Ramayan Cultural Center of Bharatiya Vidya Bhavan in the Koradi Temple premises in Nagpur. This center's first floor has an attractive display of Ramayan in pictorial form, while the heroic story of the freedom fighters from 1857 to 1947 is depicted through paintings on the second floor. She arrived in Nagpur yesterday evening on a two-day visit to the Vidarbha region of Maharashtra. She was received at the airport on her first state visit by Maharashtra Governor Ramesh Bais, Punjab Governor Banwari Lal Purohit, Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde, Union Minister Nitin Gadkari and Deputy Chief Minister Devendra Phadnavis. Today is the final day of the G20 Research and Innovation Initiative Gathering Summit and Research Ministers Meeting happening in Mumbai. The Ministerial Declaration of the G20 Science Engagements will be adopted at this RIIG Summit and Research Ministers Meeting. The meeting marks the culmination of the five RIIG meetings which were held in five cities in India this year under the theme Research and Innovation for Equitable Society. More from our correspondent. Union Minister of State for Science and Technology Dr. Jitendra Singh will chair the G20 Research Ministers meeting today. More than 100 foreign delegates including research ministers from 29 G20 members invited guest countries and international organizations are participating in the meeting. Yesterday the meeting discussed and negotiated the draft outcome document at the RIIG summit. The outcome document will be released at the end of the research ministers meeting today. Prajna Akashwani News Mumbai. This is Akashwani giving you the news. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at @AIR News Alerts. India Meteorological Department IMD has issued a red alert for three districts of coastal Karnataka predicting extremely heavy rainfall today. These districts are Udupi, Dakshina Kannada and Uttara Kannada. The weather department has also advised the fishermen to avoid going into the Arabian Sea. The IMD said that stormy weather with wind speeds gusting to 55 kilometers per hour are likely to prevail over the Karnataka coast. The IMD has also issued an orange alert for several districts of Karnataka including Belagavi, Dharwad, Gadag, Haveri, Raichur, Bengaluru Rural, Chitradurg, Davanagere, Mysuru and Tumkuru districts. Yellow alert has been issued for Chikmagalur, Hasan, Kodugu and Shimoga districts. The IMD has issued orange alert in 12 districts of Kerala today indicating the possibility of very heavy rainfall. The district administration has declared closure of educational institutions in six districts Kannur, Kasargod, Thrissur, Ernakulam, Iduki and Kottayam. In Kasargod Though colleges will function as usual, the ABJ Abdul Kalam University, Mah Gandhi University, and the Kannur University have postponed all examinations slated for today. In Iduki, water has been released from the Kallarakutti and Pambala dams from midnight, as the water level was fast reaching the maximum storage capacity. The district administration has asked people living on the banks of River Periyar and Mutharipuriyar to remain vigilant. The dams received heavy rainfall in the catchment areas during the past few days. The district authorities have imposed restrictions on quarrying and nighttime travel in the hilly regions. Kerala has been receiving heavy rains in several places during the last 3 days. Three persons have lost their lives in rain related incidents so far. A high level meeting convened by the state revenue minister K Rajan last evening reviewed the monsoon preparations in the state the meeting decided to set up taluk level relief camps where separate facilities for people suffering from influenza workers from other states and differently able people will be available in bihar at least 12 people were killed and four injured due to lightning and rain related mishaps during the past 24 hours Officials said four deaths were reported in Baksar and Banka due to lightning strike. One death each was reported in Katihar, Kaimur, Bhagalpur, Rohtas, Jahanabad, Jamui and Aurangabad districts due to lightning. 
Chief Minister Nitish Kumar has announced an excretion of 4 lakh rupees each to the family members of those killed in the rain-related incidents. Med Department has predicted heavy rain in several parts of the state, including Madhubani, Sitamari and West Champaran districts. Disaster Management Department has cautioned people not to venture out during rains in view of thunderstorm and lightning. According to data from the U.S. National Centers for Environmental Prediction, July the 3rd was the hottest day recorded globally. The average global temperature reached 17.01 degrees Celsius. This new record temperature surpassed the August 2016 record of 16.92 degrees Celsius as heat waves sizzled around the world. This has been attributed to El Nino weather pattern. The U.S. has been suffering under an intense heat dome in recent weeks amid extreme weather. In parts of China, an enduring heat wave continued with temperatures above 35 degrees Celsius. North Africa has seen temperatures near 50 degrees Celsius and in the Middle East, thousands are suffering from unusually scorching heat during the Hajj religious pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia. Antarctica, currently in its winter, registered abnormally high temperatures. Ukraine's Vernatsky research base in the vast frozen continent's Argentine islands recently broke its July temperature record with a reading of 8.7 degrees Celsius. In Jammu and Kashmir, the annual pilgrimage of Sri Amarnath Ji is progressing smoothly. Around 50,000 devotees from various parts of the country have visited and performed the darshan at the Holy Cave Shrine till yesterday evening. Yesterday, the fifth batch of 6,597 pilgrims had left the Bhagwati Nagar base camp in Jammu for the twin yatra routes of Nunman Pahalgam in Anantanag district and Baltal in Gandharbal district in a cavalcade of 253 lights and heavy vehicles amid tight security cover. In Jammu and Kashmir, Directorate of Tourism has set up a dedicated helpline desk at the Tourist Reception Centre Srinagar to facilitate the tourists and Amarnath Yatris visiting the Kashmir Valley. The aim of setting up the helpline desk is to redress the grievances of tourists instantly and in case of any difficulty, reach out to them. The numbers of the helpline desk are 88999-41010 and 88999-31010. Interested tourists can also email their grievances at helpline.kashmirtourism at gmail.com. In football, India beat Kuwait 5-4 in penalty shootout to lift SAF Championships trophy for the ninth time. India defeated Kuwait in penalty shootout in the final after 1-1 stalemate at the end of regulation time at Sri Kantirwa Stadium in Bengaluru last night. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur has expressed delight and has congratulated the Indian national football team, known as the Blue Tigers, for their remarkable performance. In a tweet, he commended the team for their nerve and scintillating performance and praised their achievement. And now, for a look at today's newspapers, it's over to Tanvi Khurana. Thank you, Sunil. Call out nations backing terror. PM at SEO meet. Headlines the Tribune. Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin and Shehbaz Sharif were among the audience in the virtual summit addressed by PM Modi, writes the paper. The attack on India's consulate in San Francisco and threats by pro-Khalistani elements to senior diplomats in Australia, Canada and the US are being seen as coordinated action to avenge the killing of Khalistani terrorist Nijar, writes Hindustan Times. NIA team may fly to U.S. to probe attack, reports the Asian Age. Forbidding authorities from destroying the natural grass in Shreveport Sports Complex, Delhi High Court says a green space in a residential area is of greater value than a forest kilometers away, reports the Times of India. And finally, quoting a report, the Hindu Business Line writes that the incidence of headache has increased post-pandemic with Mumbai. And with that, it's back to you, Sunil. Thank you, Zanvi. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Shanghai Cooperation Organization reaffirms its commitment to fight terrorism, separatism and extremism. President Draupadi Murmu to address convocation of Gondwana University in Garchiroli, Maharashtra today. IMD issues red alert for three districts of coastal Karnataka, predicting extremely heavy rainfall today. Orange alert issued for 12 districts of Kerala. July the 3rd was the world's hottest day ever due to climate change and emerging El Nino pattern. And in football, India beat Kuwait 5-4 in penalty shootout to lift SAFT Championships trophy for ninth time. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day.